word for word? Or, oh yeah. Kaha, who? Inam, this. Atra, here. Upajuhava, called for. Jimam, crooked. Dasyaha, of a kept mistress. Of a kept mistress. Sutam, son. Yat, whose? Balina, by whose subsistence? Eva, certainly. Pushtaha, grown up. Tasmin, unto him. Pratipaha, enmity. Parikritya, enemy's interest. Aste, situated. Nirvasyatam, get him out. Ashu, immediately. Purat, from the palace. Shvasanaha, let him breathe only. Translation, who asked him to come here? This son of a kept mistress. He is so crooked that he spies in the interest of the enemy against those on whose support he has grown up. Toss him out of the palace immediately and leave him with only his bread. Responsibly, who asked him to come here? This son of a kept mistress. He is so crooked that he spies in the interest of the enemy against those on whose support he has grown up. Toss him out of the palace immediately and leave him with only his breath, purport by Srila Prabhupada. When getting married, the Kshatriya kings would take on several youthful girls along with uh, the married princess. These girl attendants of the king were known as dasis or attendant mistresses. By intimate association with the king, the dasis would get sons. Such sons were called dasi putras. They had no claim to a royal position, but they would get maintenance and other facilities just like princes. Vidura was the son of such a dasi, and he was thus not counted amongst the kshatriyas. King Dhritarashtra was very affectionate toward his younger dasi putra brother, Vidura, and Vidura was a great friend and ph philosophical advisor to Dhritarashtra. Duryodhana knew very well that Vidura was a great soul and well-wisher, but unfortunately he used strong words to hurt his innocent uncle. Duryodhana not only attacked Vidura's birth, but also called him an infidel because he seemed to support the, the cause of Yudhisthira, whom Duryodhana considered his enemy. He desired that Vidura be immediately put out of the palace and deprived of all his possessions. If possible, he would have liked him Cain until he was left with nothing but his breath. He charged that Vidura was a spy of the Pandavas because he advised King Dhritarashtra in their favor, such as the, situa such as the situation in, of palace life and the intricacies of diplomacy. That even a faultless person like Vidura could be charged with something abominable and punished. Vidura was struck with wonder at such unexpected behavior from his nephew Duryodhana. And before anything actually happened, he decided to leave the palace for good. Uh, translation again by uh, Srila Prabhupada, who asked him to come here? Who asked him to come here? This son of a kept mistress. He is so crooked that he spies in the interest of the enemy against those on, whom, on whose support he has grown up. Toss him out of the palace immediately and leave him with only his breath. So this was uh, Duryodhana's demonic uh, way of, of, of treating Vidura. Vidura has a very interesting history. Uh, bef before we go into that history, and it's, it's not, it's not a, a, a fairy tale, it's an actual incident that's uh, described in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to read a section of a purport from the Adi Leela, chapter 17, text 7. 
This is, this is what Prabhupada writes in the purport. According to Ayurvedic treatment, the entire physiological system is conducted by three elements, namely vayu, pitta, and kapha, air, bile, and mucus. Mm. Open quote, air, bile, and mucus, close quote. Secretions within the body transform into other secretions like blood, urine, and stool. But if there are disturbances in the metabolism, the secretions turn into kapha, open paren mucus, and paren, by the influence of the air within the body. According to the Ayurvedic system, when the secretion of bile and formation of mucus disturb the air circulating within the body, 59 varieties of diseases may occur. One such disease is craziness. So Prabhupada goes on to explain that uh, Lord Chaitanya said that he acted crazy because he had some uh, dis location or uh, imbalance of the airs in the body. It's kind of interesting that, that, that even Ayurvedic science had a way of curing mental uh, diseases by medicinal purposes. I saw a photograph in, a, in an article, someone is looking it up, in National Geographic a few years back that looked like it was a man standing in a very large uh, clay flower pot with sand, buried in sand up to his neck and across his forehead was, was uh, what they called in days of yore a poultice, a, a pack of some kind of medicine. And it was tied around so it would stay there. And it was made out of something that looked like bark. So it was a, a medical treatment to, to uh, cure him of schizophrenia or some kind of bipolar disorder that he had. And it's also somewhat interesting that very, very uh, difficult diseases to diagnose diseases like migraine, for example, and I know what that is because I have it myself. It's a disease that no one knows where it comes from or how to cure it. Uh, people have even gone so far as to have uh, surgery to, to cure this disease, uh, and uh, they've done a lot of things, but no one knows the, the, the actual cure for it. But this uh, one devotee, who is presently the, the head of the Strategic uh, Planning uh, Commission, uh, did cure it by using a psychosomatic cure, uh, a type of meditation, which she claims has, has eradicated her migraine uh, disease, which she has had for something like 30 years. She travels around with the, uh, uh, an injection kit of Imigran and uh, takes it across the borders of various countries with the appropriate papers so that it passes and she gives herself, and she was giving herself an injection in the leg to uh, stop the disease, but she found that, that without any, any uh, use of drugs, it's actually possible to cure this disease, and she swears by this technique, which I, I hope to, to uh, try. And I would also rec highly recommend it for other sufferers of migraine, because it, it actually works, at least it's worked for her. Um, so this Manduka, Muni and uh, Yamaraj and Vidura have a very interesting history. The, the history is narrated in the uh, Bhagavatam. Uh, it so happened once upon a time, and again, this is not a fairy tale. I'm starting out, but it's, it's as in a fairy tale. Uh, the, uh, uh, Manduka Muni, being a Muni and very liberal minded, used to uh, host, uh, or he gave shelter to thieves and rogues. And uh, it so happened that these thieves and rogues were discovered by the police and they arrested all of them, including Manduka Muni, who was not really a thief, but he was giving shelter to thieves. So anyway, uh, he, they were all going to be punished. And in those days, they had very severe means of punishment. There were dunking machines, there were, there were chungas, they would throw people on upraised swords. Uh, they were very brutal methods of punishment. Um, of course, electric chairs and, and um, hanging is pretty, pretty brutal also. It, it, it uh, asphyxiates the uh, victims. But uh, electric chairs and, and, uh, and uh, uh, lethal injections are considered humane. Uh, gas chambers are considered humane. But uh, people have told me that, and guillotines, where they cut their head off and they're supposed to have an instant death. But uh, Sadapuda has told me that it's not really a painless death if they cut your head off or if you go into a gas chamber or get the electric chair. But there's a lot of pain involved that uh, it, you don't die, as, in other words, as soon as your head is cut off or as soon as your heart stops beating or as soon as the lethal injection gets, gets into all the vital organs. 
but there's a, it's a very painful process. So it seems to be very uh, civil and, and, and very much uh, progressive after, after the dunking machines and the chunga and, and other very brutal methods. And they, they used to impale people also. That is, they would uh, uh, send a sharpened um, rod up through the, the uh, opening in their rectum, up, through their, up into their mouth. So it would come out of the mouth or the, the upper part of the back. And they would display sometimes the, the people who got punished like this so they would know not to, not to do it. And they cut sometimes people's hands off. Even arms were cut off. I think in, in even recent uh, times, there was the uh, punishment of cutting hands off in, the, in Iran. But that was abolished when the new regime came into, into being. Anyway, these uh, police arrested Manduka Muni along with all the, these rogues. And then he... Manduka Muni protested, and he went to Yamaraj to protest. He said, that, why, why are you punishing me so brutally? I mean, they were going to impale all these people and um, put up sticks up their rectum. And uh, Manduka Muni uh, cursed Yamaraj. He said, if you're, if you're going to impale me, that's just not proper, because I'm a, I'm a Muni, and uh, you know, I've, I've, I've undergone great austerities to uh, achieve what I have, and, and you're, you're about to punish me. So he cursed Ma Manduka Muni, cursed Yamaraj. He cursed him to take birth as a Shudra. And that, uh, that Yamaraj became Vidura, according to, to what Prabhupada wrote in this purport in the, in the uh, first canto. And, and as, it, as it was said, he was a, the son of a Dasiputra, uh, uh, of a Dasi, so he became a Dasiputra. And he was the younger brother of Dhritarashtra. And, and it so happened that he was, his advice to Dhritarashtra was always sanguine, was always good advice, because he was an ordinary person, Vidura. He was actually Yamaraj, and Yamaraj has a, a kind of a brain where he could read people's minds, you know, very advanced brain. Uh, like Lord Brahma and Lord Krishna, they're omniscient, they, they know what people are thinking, they're, they're, they're able to read people's minds. So Vidura was like that, but he, when he was asked, and he was also very tolerant, when he was asked to leave the palace, as is described in this verse, uh, as uh, Duryodhana asked him to, to uh, depart immediately uh, and that he should be caned and, and tortured to, and left only with his breath, he, he took it as a blessing and he left immediately. He, he, and uh, that's why this, this uh, uh, section that was uh, referred to in the Bhagavatam is called uh, uh, Vidura Leaves Home. And it said that he was uh, a kind of a spy. He was kind of on the pond of his side, even though he lived in the house of, of Dhritarashtra, and, Dhritar and Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana uh, sort of condemned him for spying on the very people who gave him his sustenance, who gave him shelter, who gave him food, and looked after him. So, you know, Duryodhana is a very demonic sort of character, and, and that, this is why he said such, such evil things. Uh, so the mind is very powerful. Uh, it was the, the mind of Vidura was very powerful. He knew the mind of Dhritarashtra and how why Dhritarashtra caused this this war uh, because he was very attached to his sons. He, he wanted the, he wanted to continue to be the king. Uh, and Duryodhana is often referred to the king, even though or a prince, even though he wasn't yet. So the mind is very powerful. And uh, one devotee named Druta Karma wrote a lot about the the power of the mind. Um, well, I once saw a film of a person who was uh, able to break a, a piece of wood, 50 by 100 centimeters or two by fours or something like that, with, his, with the, the, uh, the flesh of his hand. And uh, according to the uh, slow motion picture, the, the, uh, the, the wood started to break before his hand, hand had uh, even reached it. So this was the power of the mind. The, the, uh, martial arts instructor was teaching people how to concentrate the mind to such a degree that it could, it could shatter or break a, a, a very strong piece of wood. So it just shows that how powerful the mind was. And there was a, a devotee, her name was Curie, Madame Curie, a Polish, uh, French physicist, I think she won a Nobel Prize, who had these seances in which she uh, exhorted people uh, to, to uh, to come forward from the dead, people who were disembodied, sort of like specters or what we would call ghosts. And uh, these things were, were uh, uh, very conveniently relegated to the scrap heap of history, even though they were recorded. And, and she was a very famous physicist. Uh, there, was an, there was a magazine in England called The Unexplained, which talked about things that were documented, unusual occurrences, 
once uh, it rained fishes. Fish rained down from the sky, and this is all documented. And there's a, a, another phenomenon called spontaneous internal combustion, where people just went on fire and disappeared, uh, even at the altar, as they were in, in a marriage ceremony. And there was nothing left but their shoes. All this is recorded, it's all documented, but it has been very conveniently sort of ignored. And, uh, and now we think that everything is getting better. We have good communication, we have good travel, we, we have uh, good medicine, and everything is, is, is improving. Things are always getting better, as the song said. Things are getting better. That was even a popular song called Things Are Getting Better. But they're not getting better. And, and as Prabhupada wrote in the, uh, the introduction to Srimad Bhagavatam, there, things seem to be getting better, but, he said, as he wrote, there's a pinprick in society somewhere. So a pinprick is like, a balloon, for example, looks very, very, uh, very beautiful, and, and it's part of the celebration for having children. But if you prick it with a pin, it just it ceases to exist. It pops and it goes away. So there's a, a pin prick in society at large, and the, the pin prick is that people don't understand that there's life after death, that there's actually a continue, that the soul is eternal. They don't understand that. So, so things have become very. Uh, conveniently relegated to the scrap heap of history, even though they, they are documented. And there are many documents. Uh, Sadapuda wrote a book called uh, Alien Identities, was the original name of it. It's called something else now. But it's documented that uh, test pilots uh, and many other people uh, who were, some were educated, some were not educated, had, had seen uh, uh, vehicles acting in a very strange way. They called them unidentified flying objects or flying saucers, where they could take off suddenly and, and move uh, left and right, up and down, instant, almost instantly. And this has all been very carefully documented and recorded. Uh, such, uh, such things and beings on these have been recorded. There was even a television series called Taken. And it was, uh, uh, there was a group uh, therapy session this was all, uh, it was recorded. This is a documentary sort of thing. It was, a, actually it was, I think, a drama, but the, it was based on fact. On, and uh, the documentary was people who had been abducted by uh, beings from supposedly other planets. And uh, they were, you know, subjected to some, some very strange things. And they, they uh, actually had lost their memory of what had happened. So they had to have a group therapy session to to compare their notes and, and, and some, somehow or other get back to normal. But all this was, was carefully recorded and it was all documented that they were taken by, that was the name of the series, taken by these people from other planets and experimented upon. And, and this has occurred all over the world, not, not only in the United States and Pennsylvania and, and places like that, but in, in, in France and in various European countries and in Russia. There are many examples that have been documented of, of identified flying objects and uh, unidentified flying objects and unidentified people. So they do exist and they're very, they're very powerful. Um, Oh, th there's another, another uh, uh, science called psychic surgery. And there's a, there's a, a film I saw of, of a psychic surgeon removing a goiter, that's a growth, from, from a woman's throat without using any kind of anesthesia or any, any kind of, 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 of uh, general an anesthesia or local anesthesia. And according to the picture, he just does an incision without using any kind of instruments on the throat. And it's all done outside on a, on a sort of a gurney or a, 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 a sort of a, we, uh, um, what do they call those things like a, you push people on? Yeah, like a trolley. Anyway, uh, and, and he takes out this goiter and, and then he, he, he uh, this psychic surgeon from the, I think he was from the Philippines, uh, closed up the, the uh, opening in her throat and, and shortly after that she awakens and she, she felt no pain at all. She just, just uh, it was all done while she was totally conscious. So this, this method was poo-pooed by the British Medical Association, who uh, thought that, uh, that people shouldn't sure, sort of opt, to, opt up for alternative methods of, of curing or surgery. And uh, what they did was, in the, this, they showed that the, in a film, I, I didn't see this film, but I was told by, on good authority that there was a film where they made it look like uh, the psychic surgeons were using a sleight of hand technique. 
they were they were taking uh, growths out of people uh, out of out of uh, growths. They were they were actually pigs' entrails that were removed. So so these. Uh, these pharmaceutical industries and their associations like the American Medical Association, British Medical Association, they're very much uh, able to um, d discredit or deprecate any alternative methods of therapy, whether they're uh, done with the mind or, or uh, psych some kind of psychosis, uh, psychic <laughs> methods. Uh, they're very, very much uh, opposed to it because they're, they're making very big money by uh, producing pharmaceuticals. And I'm not saying that all pharmaceuticals are, are evil or bad, but most of them are. I take some of them myself. I take them for, for migraine headaches. And I'm very, very happy that the, the Smith Beecham clients spent billions of dollars and something like 30 years to develop a drug that takes at least takes away the symptoms of a very painful uh, experience. And I, I just wanted to say that I'm in a great deal of pain right at the moment, so this, uh, this talk may be a little bit incoherent and discursive, but that's the reason. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if there are any, uh, anyone that wants to ask anything that, uh, about anything, I'll read the verse again. Uh, who asked him to come here, this son of a kept mistress? He is so crooked that he spies in the interest of the enemy against those on whose support he has grown up. Toss him out of the palace immediately and leave him with only his breath. Sometimes it is, um, questioned why Bhishma Dave, uh, while Draupadi was being insulted and disrobed publicly in, in, in a meeting, why he didn't do anything to protest. He's one of the 12 Mahajans. He's a very important person. And Prabhupada gave one answer, saying that because he was supported, he was given shelter, and he was given food by the, by the uh, Kuru dynasty, that he, he didn't speak up or do anything because he was being very uh, very diplomatic, which was part of his expertise. So there are many instances of, of, uh, of this. And, and this is happening with Duryodhana, who's very, very vociferous and, and asking Vidura to leave the palace immediately and, and describes him as being not, not truly a Brahmin uh, like the rest of the Kurus or, or Kshatriyas, but, uh, but the son of a, of a kept mistress, as, 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 as it's explained in the purport here, there were these Dasis who were uh, kept like maidservants, and uh, sometimes they had sons, and the sons were uh, there were allowed to live in the palace, and they were given you know food and, and shelter and so on and so forth. So that's the story of uh, of Vidura, and it was uh, not until he was uh, speaking with with Maitreya that all this this history of of his uh, who he really was came out and the power of his mind. Uh, sometimes Krishna is, is said to be which he is, omniscient. But he's not omniscient like, like um, some gurus or, or uh, high demigods who are very powerful and, and uh, people like uh, um, Durvasa Muni who could travel you know, throughout outer space for millions of years, which he did when he, when he was uh, condemned by, by, Ma, by Maharaj Ambarish. Um, some of them are very powerful, but they're not omniscient in the sense that Krishna is totally omniscient. Like Krishna knows, for example, how many hairs are, in my case, hair follicles, uh, we have on our heads. Uh, but we, uh, no one else knows, no one else can say. Maybe Lord Brahma or, Lord, or, or, or Yamaraj knows a little bit more, but none of them are omniscient, like Krishna is omniscient, knows every single thing in every part of the universe, everything that's going on, and what, what, what our constitutions are, what we're thinking at every moment, that is true omniscience. And the omniscience that is sometimes ascribed to, uh, sometimes, uh, one of his books, Purnachandra, talked about blind acceptance of authority, blind acceptance of authority and blind rejection of authority. And he says that blind rejection of authority is more popular nowadays than blind acceptance of authority, which is probably true. But anyway, this uh, blind acceptance of authority is sometimes found when people think that they're, they're a spiritual leader, uh, 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 Shiksha or Diksha is omniscient, knows everything. And everything that he says is always true and always correct and always perfect at all times and all places. One of, I, I guess, my pet peeves is people who lift a sentence out of one of something Prabhupada said in a purport or in a, in a, in a lecture. and. Uh, and uh, purport that it is always true at all times and all places for all people, which is not what uh, Prabhupada meant. And uh, unless one carefully researches what Prabhupada's 
said in, in many different places on a particular subject, uh, it's sort of intellectually dishonest to lift something out that's, uh, or without, out of its context and say that it's always true in all places and all times. But that goes on. It's one of the uh, symptoms of blind acceptance of authority. They think, well, Prabhupada's an authority, so he said this, Prabhupada said that, and so it's always true at all times and all places. So I see some heads nodding that uh, that's a universally acceptable thing, <laughs> even though uh, it's being recorded uh, and, and uh, all over the world. I think everyone will agree to it. So if there are any, uh, any comments or questions on any of this, uh, I'll just read the verse once again. Who asked him to come here, the son of a kept mistress? And this is, again, Duryodhana's uh, condemnation of, Yam of Vidura, formerly Yamaraj, in a previous life. He is so crooked that he spies in the interest of the enemy against those on whose support he has grown up. Toss him out of the palace immediately and leave him with only his breath. He was such an expert diplomat that he made it sound as if Vidura was in the wrong, that he was, that he was born of a dasi, that uh, he was being maintained by the, the Kurus, and, and yet he was, he was a spy. Uh, he was spying for, his, for the Kurus' enemies. So a person who is very, uh, very careful, and Duryodhana was a very careful administrator and very expert at diplomacy, could make things sound like they might be right, even when they're totally wrong. That's diplomacy. Or one definition of, of a diplomat is a person who can tell you to go to hell and so that you look forward to the journey. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll close with that little joke. Uh, if there's any, anyone that wants to ask anything or say anything. Yes, Krishna Rupa? The microphone. I want you to be aware that whatever you're saying is, is going to be heard all across the world. And uh, there are people who are going to make it look like you're wrong. <laughs> that wouldn't be hard. Pardon? In my case, that wouldn't be hard. <laughs> well, it's not hard in any case. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to get a microphone, but you can speak anyway. Anyway, I was just um, going to make a couple of comments. Um, thank you very much. Well, I'm I don't know where exactly it's said, but it's obvious that, that uh, the Hatha Yoga has become very popular, partly because it's a cure for many diseases. Uh, there was a, a, a demonstration by a guy named Ayungar, Ayungar, uh, an Indian man, Ayungar, in somewhere in Bombay, and he was an elderly person. He was in his 60s or 70s, and and uh, he he gave a demonstration that kind of it, because of his vitality and his old age, it kind of indirectly indicated that uh, the, the, of the power of yoga to to uh, to uh, uh, bring people to a very vital position, even though they're very aged and and the ravages of age can be sort of discounted. Uh, so it's a very, very uh, popular and very useful. In fact, I used to practice it myself, Hatha Yoga. Uh, I had a book by uh, Swami Vishnu Devananda, and it had pictures of him doing all sorts of strange, unusual poses, and I found that they were very helpful. And I, I think that I've lived to the age of 80 without any serious or terminal diseases, uh, partly because I, I practice Hatha Yoga so carefully. Uh, I just kind of got bored. 
but it, I should have kept on. I mean, I know people that are that are my age that have still are practicing it, and it for their for health reasons, and it's very good. Thank you, Mama. I, I did have something else to say, but I'm not going to say it because it might be seen as controversial. Well, you can speak with me after class, and we can talk about it when it's not being recorded. Yeah, uh, I think Krishna Kirtan, you had something to say. I'm just wondering, like, in the Bhagavatam, we have Bharat Maharaj's text to it as a, and he's got that full memory. In, in the case of Vidura being Yamaraj, is it, do we know it? Like, has he got access to, does he know he's Yamaraj or is he a completely different personality? to speak to him, speak about him as being Yamaraj, a great soul. So does he think I'm a completely different personality if he gets his Yamaraj, or is he, is he Yamaraj inside of what he do with the Well, I, my imperfect understanding is that when someone is incarnated, he gets another body, he or she, and uh, it, that, that uh, getting another body also means getting another mind. So in other words, he doesn't necessarily have all the, the uh, facilities that Yamaraj had, like he could read minds and he could carefully uh, record everything that was going on by everybody. He could mete out punishment, he could, you know, if necessary. But according to what I understand or what I know, as soon as one incarnates, he doesn't necessarily take on all the qualities of, of the person he, he is, uh, well, he was in a per per uh, previous life. Very great in spiritual prowess. Obviously, he he uh, he was a, a spiritual consultant to Dhritarashtra to the point where he got him to leave the palace with him and and to renounce his kingdom, which was a very very difficult thing for Dhritarashtra to do because he was very attached to being the king and having his sons be the king of his dynasty. But Vidura had some spiritual realization. He was able to convince his uh, older brother what to do. So he was very much respected, even though he may not have had all the facilities of, of Yamaraj. And even though he was low born, I think Prabhupada has written in several places that it uh, doesn't matter whether, you're, whether where you're born or whether you're black, white, male, female, young or old or whatever. Uh, if you know the science of Krishna, then you're fully qualified as a, as a Brahminical person. You can give initiation, you can do all things that Brahmins customarily do. Anyways, anything else? So, uh, Krishna Rupa, should we have a little sort of private discussion? Okay. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Yeah. It's a nice picture of Krishna dancing on Kali on the cover of this book. It's a very wonderful pastime. And uh, we know that Kali became a, a great devotee after this incident because he. He, uh, not only were his his uh, the Dasi, his wife's protesting, uh, but uh, he he got the the benediction of having Krishna's feet placed on his head. <laughs> <laughs>